complete. Every great hero needs a place to hang their cape. Figuratively speaking, of course, you don't have to wear a cape. Superman has his fortress, Batman has the cave, Wonder Woman has her retreat. I have my... well, that's on a need-to-know basis. And now, you can have your own base. I've dropped some items into your inventory. Go ahead and use both of the lair themes, then I'll tell you what to do next. Yeah, so apparently she can tell us what everybody else has, but not what she has. That seems kind of fishy. And we got a little something something from the Superman. And it's a crappy chest plate. He loves us so much. Like, thanks, dude. But it's got a new style. So, for the sake of argument, we're going to equip it and see what this new style is. I believe it was contemporary tech. And are we happy? Actually, you know what? I do kind of like that. Like, I, I kind of like the whole robotic theme of it. But can we change, like, the main with this? Oh, that looks really good. Tell me what you guys think about it in the comments. I'm, I think I might go... I, I'm going to go with this. I actually genuinely like that. So we're going to stick with this for a while. So. Oh. Ba Boom. And it makes our emblem like kind of pop out a little bit more. But yes, Oracle has now given us um, base items. And as a f uh, member, I actually get two different styles of bases. Like two different styles versus what free to play you get. Uh, if you're free to play, you're just going to get what is called a dive hideout, and it's really small. But as a free, as a member, I get these two new themes. Shaboom. Shaboom. Good. Now that you have a theme for your base, you need to get a deed. These are used to actually grant base ownership and to select a location for the entrance. You don't say. So, there's our deed. Use your deed, it will grant you access to a base and allow you to choose a location in Metropolis or Gotham for the entrance. Give it a go. <sighs> okay, so here's the gothic lair. This is what it's going to look like. Like, I got two different layer setups. I got the deco and I got the gothic. Here is the gothic setup. This is pretty much what it's going to look like. And the deco is similar, just it looks less grungy. But... I might go, I'll go with the deco. Now, oh, no, I don't want to create my base there. Pretty much, you have a whole mess of places to choose from when choosing your base and, like, where you want to place it. But honestly, I'm cheap and I don't have a lot of money, so I'm just going to go with one that's kind of, like, encased around a lot of stuff and is cheap so we're gonna go with 7 7311 franklin street all right head to your base now and we'll take a little tour here we go and we're here it's time to explore our base this is your mainframe the nerve center of your lair you can use it to gain access to powerful tools like orbital strikes backup reinforcements and powerful equipment mods your mainframe's power is maintained here as well, so be sure to keep it up so you can have access to more powerful features. This is your dispenser, where you'll retrieve the items that you've selected in the mainframe, such as communicators for your backup and orbital strikes. Finally, this is your base's control panel. It's used to enter decoration mode, alter some of the colors of your base, and for other utility purposes. Okay. Um, what she was saying about the dispenser, and she showed our mainframe is close by, but it's actually not. But as a free-to-play, what you see right here in this room, this is the size of your base. No more, no less. This is your size. But when you upgrade, you get two new areas that open up into something like this. Much bigger, and... Honestly, it just gives you more room to fill it with crap, honestly. But 
this thing right here, this, what is this called? I can't remember. This is our generator. This allows us to buy mod, like have mods that are dropped for certain things. Um, like your offensive mods will be precision and might. Uh, the support mods, I'm assuming, are restoration and vitalization. And then you got, obviously, your health and power. And the general are, like, locations. You'll get, like, little white flash drives that tell you, like, once you increase the power level, you can st use the levels to teleport to them. But that's pretty much members only. You can't increase the power of it. And the same thing with this little gizmo here, which is our base mainframe. From here, we can get, like, sidekicks, uh, backup. I don't know the differences, honestly. Uh, orbital strikes, supply drops, tactical mods. But again, you gotta have power in your generator to use them. And in order to put the generator or power in the generator, you gotta be a member. And plus, buying these cause co co costs marks of triumph. And as you can see up here, we don't exactly have a lot of marks of triumph, so we're probably not gonna be buying a lot of this stuff until like in game. But, we're going to come in here, and from here, Oracle has given us a little bit of gear, as you can see, to kind of put in our base. That's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to owning and operating your base. Let's get started on placing some base items. I've given you a few things. Check your inventory and collect the base items. And as you can see, from here, we have our little... We now have our that you've emblem. added the base items to your base inventory, use the control panel to enter decorator mode. It's decoration mode? Okay, as you can While see... While in decorator mode, you can place your items at the appropriate markers. While most base items are cosmetic, there are amenities you can acquire that have very specific functions like bank, mail, and broker access. However, amenities can only be placed at specific markers. Once you've filled up enough markers, you will unlock free placement mode and be able to place base items almost anywhere. So, that about wraps it up. I'm sure you'll uncover even more interesting things about your base. Good luck. And don't forget to try placing those items. Oracle out. Yeah, well. Boom. Boom. And now we have our crappy looking base items. We got a lamp here that we can hit our head on. We got a table and a clock. <laughs> you get these exact same three items every single time, no matter what. Uh, we're gonna complete. Heads up, there's trouble in the Tomorrow District. Circe's bestia morphs are all over the area, which means Circe can't be far behind. Zatanna in the Chinatown safe house can give you further instructions. Too bad. But. Before you guys run off and do that, don't forget to go back into your missions and get your armory. This is a rather cool little gizmo. Uh, give me a couple minutes, guys. I'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. Sorry about that, guys. Oh, well, for you it seemed like seconds. For me it was like 15 minutes. But, we're back, and I guess a little bit while I was gone, I placed the armory that we got, and this thing is pretty fancy. I like it. What it does is we can imprint, yeah, why not? And we can imprint our current thing. We're going to go to imprint menu, I'm just going to imprint appearance, just the appearance. And what this is going to do, we're going to rename it. We're going to name it Starter Armor. Yeah, that rhymed though. Boom. See, it's right down there. Starter Armor. And we're going to change the icon real quick. That looks cool. No clue what it is, but it looks cool. And there it is. There's our outfit right there. Now I'm going to show you what this does. Well, first we got to come over here to this one, I believe it is. At least I hope it's this one. 
It is not this one. You're gonna go down to the other one. And it's this one. You're gonna see it's right there. Starter armor is number one. So, just to show you guys what this does, I'm going to go to my styles. And I'm going to change my colors. Just to prove what, the, or just to show you what this does. We're going to make it uh, green. And, you know, we're going to go Hulk colors. Green and purple. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that sexiness. Green green and purple, man. But say, you know, you don't want to do that anymore. Well, we're going to hold off on that for a sec and come back up here. Say we missed what we looked like. Well, as long as you got that one saved, you press the number one button. Shaboo! And we're back. To how we look like and then that's that's the end of the base but instead of doing the world of tomorrow I told you guys we we're gonna do area 51 we need you to report to area 51 as soon as possible when you are ready for transport I will contact you as soon as we are able to teleport you in okay first I'm going to change my loadouts real quick. Oh, hey, we got a healer roll thing now. <laughs> change those two. We got a healer thing now, so. Oh, but I don't, I, I do have healing abilities, but not good enough. I mean, I don't even know what all my powers do. I'll be right back, you guys. I'm going to read what my powers do okay. real quick. Uh, okay, so we got a little bit of healing powers, but we're going to stick to the damage bit in this. I, I don't have enough power to do that and we're gonna go to four player we're gonna skip over the one and two player because you know can't do much of those <laughs> can't do anything there yeah and we're gonna go to area 51 and suggested level is level 10 when I did these on my main I did I waited till I was a couple levels over but I want to give you guys something to actually go out on instead of just being this episode just all informational and boring so we're gonna do this and hopefully we can get lucky and the queue won't be too long so Unless the queue is really fast and pops almost instantly. Um, I will see you guys in a bit. Finally, the queue popped after like 10 minutes. I was about to say, if this queue doesn't pop, we're going to have to end the video here. And I'm going to have to apologize to you guys. But... To gain the green kryptonite project Cadmus is researching here in Area 51. We cannot allow this to occur. Eliminate Brainiac's forces and shut down their energy cells to give Cadmus time to muster reinforcements. Okay. Self-destruction imminent! Okay, Warning. while we're in here, I actually was able to get at least stabilized. one person in. They're level 30, and their stats are insane, so stuff is going to die incredibly fast, and the person that I am referring to is Healing Kron. They're just going to mow down stuff. Energy source destabilized. Uh, that's the person right in front of me. Okay. Once we get the 50, eventually, there's going to be a boss that spawns right up there. These guys can get up. Oh, there we go. And there he is. For an entity located, target locked, entity set for termination. And this boss is gonna die really fast. Boom. What did I tell you? Healing Kron is annihilating stuff. If resistance is too heavy, strip the Brainiac Force's neural cores after you defeat them. This blinds their servitor and stops further reinforcements. While here, all you gotta do is just follow your mini-map. It'll lead you to the areas you need to go to. And somebody died. How did one of our people die standing next to somebody with level 93 gear? 
That just seems completely absurd. Again. Died again. Oh, it's Healing Kron. Healing Kron died that time. Died that time. How does a healer die so fast? Oh, my bad. He's not even... Okay, I'm sorry. I'm looking at that wrong. Usually the little health icon pops up over when one of your teammates has fallen, but it's actually part of the mission. There's actually people that we have to pick up and heal. I feel so stupid now for thinking... Yes, yeah, just just ignore me. I, j I I feel really stupid. Now. As you can see, we've done a lot of we've exploded a lot of barrels in here. And since they respawn so fast, I'm not even mad. You can actually get a, a not a lot, but you can actually get a few achievements for exploding barrels. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's the red ones or the orange ones. You can get achievements for them. And I realize I may have forgotten to tell you what the barrels do. The uh, red ones with the fire logos on them, they're literally just explosive barrels. If you stand near them, you get a bit of damage. If enemies are near them when they explode, they get a bit of damage. Then there's also orange ones scattered around. If I could find one as an example. Uh, that one right over there. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, it's right there, right by the investigation token. Those are health perils. And when they explode, they emit a kind of ring. And this guy is already shooting at me. But they emit a ring. And all it does is, as long as you're within the confines of those rings... See, watch, I'll show you real quick. As long as you're in the confines of those rings, you will get healed, both power and health. Interference wave that affects the brainiac sparks in the area. Flip their neural cores, and you can reset them to your advantage. Okay, we're gonna skip the fighting for now, and we're just gonna focus on getting up on the wall here and going around and oh, oh well, I guess we gotta fight this guy. We're gonna pick up these. And this is just so can I can, Okay, I can't pick that one up. Fine then. Didn't want to pick that one up anyway. These have already been picked up. How is somebody picking these up so fast? Jesus. Fine then, I guess we'll go down and fight. All you gotta do mainly is fight these Brainiac Sparks. And then once you have them done, they'll pop a little computer above their head. We're not gonna pick that up even though we want to pick it up. Wow, there's, there's three variants in this area alone. That's insane. Well, the last boss is going to pop up here, so we're just going to wait here until somebody beats the last tower patrol. Control center defense sequence is. complete. Defensive measures are now online. Wow, I think this is the longest I've ever recorded, but then again, half the time, a lot of time I was AFK. Wow. We're done well. Oh, I leveled up. Now is the crucial battle. Just beyond here, a Brainiac Servitor and its greater accumulators oversee the transfer of the Kryptonite onto their ship. But you may not want to face this battle alone. Well, it's impossible Once to face this battle. the accumulators are down and the Kryptonite is safe, Oracle will hack the ship's teleporter so you can deactivate the Prime Servitor itself. Says you don't want to face this battle alone when it's technically impossible, considering you have to have four players to enter. Oh. 
And there's the final boss. But something tells me that by the time we get up there, it'll be dead. Because we got somebody up here who's a little... Oh, no, no, they actually waited. Got a four up here. That was it. Life, an interesting concept, yet ultimately flawed. As is this insignificant stack, useful only as the key to unlocking the multiverse itself. I have harvested entire galaxies of their data, leaving nothing behind. Let their champions attempt to defeat me. Let them swell their ranks with power stolen from their own future's defeat. ultimately fail. I am Brainiac, and the Earth will be mine. I don't know if it's overconfidence or cockiness, this guy. Holy crap! We actually did second to top damage. We will store it now at the Watchtower, where it can be properly guarded. The Justice League thanks you, and I will certainly protect you. Martian out. Now that we're here, uh, I guess I will get this one first since we're right here. Here's the first investigation token. Well, not the first. Chief but. researcher's log. There are a variety of kryptonite isotopes, distinguished by color. And then, while we're also here, you come up just behind where we found... Just behind where we found this one, you will find a briefing token here in this satellite dish. Luther to Cadmus. I've spent too long on our artificial kryptonite research to have Brainiac steal our raw materials. I trust our other projects have been secured at your other locations. If not, luckily I have allies on my payroll capable of remedying your incompetence. I'll deduct this from your payments as per our contract. Luther out. I'm not gonna exactly show where these are on the map. Just follow me, I guess. Superman, Lois Lane from the Daily Planet. We hear Actually, that Brainiac is attacking nah, I'll show them on the map, too. As you know, they've been openly collecting kryptonite, the one element that can weaken you. Do you have any comment on- Miss Lane, I'm not sure where you get your information. Surely the U.S. government ensures that any Cadmus base is working within legal limits. As for the kryptonite threat, it seems that our new generation of heroes has inherited our strengths, but not our weaknesses. The JLA and I will be working closely with them to contain any threat from Brainiac or anyone else. found two briefings and one investigation token. If we go back over to here where we found the second one, just follow the road up. I'm not sure if there's exactly one back here. Can't, like, I have a general idea where most of them are, but I believe there's also an achievement for kind of... There it is. Exploring everything. Something tells me we're going to find all the briefing tokens before we find all the investigation tokens. This is Lois Lane with Daily Planet Live. A large Brainiac assault force is launching an attack on a military base inside the infamous Area 51. Its target? A large store of green kryptonite confiscated by the military for research. The base is run by Cadmus, a private government contractor, best known for their willingness to provide results without asking questions. More updates to come on Daily Planet Live. Okay. Here's one of the starting investigation tokens that we got, or missed. Chief Researcher's Log. Initial findings indicate that lead may block some amount of kryptonite radiation. Or 
third one, technically. Chief Researcher's Log. It's possible that kryptonite may cause radiation poisoning in humans. There's two briefings nearby. Here's one. And I believe we saw this one as we passed over it. This is Amanda Waller to the Area 51 Cadmus Project. I will remind you that the U.S. government contracted you to complete our green kryptonite research. It must not fall into Brainiac's hands. Requests for Suicide Squad backup are being taken under consideration. Until then, we authorize you to defend yourself. Waller out. Here is the next briefing. This is a U.S. government classified safety briefing on green kryptonite, sometimes called Green K. Area 51 is the United States' primary storehouse for this alien mineral. Its effects on Kryptonians, such as Superman, are well known and include draining strength, even to death. However, effects on Earth life forms are still unknown. Green K. They're making it sound like it's a drug. Oh, oh it's right there. Here's one of the investigation tokens in this area. I'm not sure if this is one of the variants. Chief researcher's log. There are indications that kryptonite may have applications right as an energy source. Nope, because I can still hear it. Okay, so, and then here's one of the last investigation tokens. Oh, well, that wraps up the investigation tokens. Chief researcher's say. log. Our research confirms that kryptonite causes considerable harm to kryptonians. Yeah, we already know this. And then the last briefing token is just outside, over here, down here, right here. Explosion. I am Jack Ryder, and you are wrong. Why? Because you trust the government. I'm telling you, they've teamed up with private genetic powerhouse Cadmus up in Area 51, and they're researching everything from green kryptonite to DN aliens. You think different? Then you are wrong. That's Jack Ryder's, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, leave a like and maybe subscribe. It'd be much appreciated. Every little bit counts to me. I'm Chaotic Skittle, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Until then, goodbye.